Hey guys, Daisy here. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my usual style. No analogies or animations, sorry. But we're going to get right into business. Let's talk about net ionic equations. So this is a pretty big topic in chemistry, meaning that it contains so much information that you've learned previously in the year and relies on so many concepts that you've already learned. So it's important to have a good grasp of all that. It's also a pretty time-consuming process. You know, it takes a while to do. There's a lot that goes into it. And a lot of people struggle with getting these done on time, which isn't really the best situation to be in if, you know, you need to take a timed exam. So this video is not going to cover the basics of net ionic equations or how they work. That will be done in a later video. Today, I'm just going to show you what I think is the fastest way to do them in a, you know, pretty short period of time. So let's get right into it. Let's consider the problem lead to nitrate is combined with aluminum chloride. So this is a common way that you'll see these net ionic equation problems presented. Our first order of business is going to be turning this into a formula. So we're going to write down the compounds as a formula. So lead to nitrate is going to be PbNO3 uh, 2 and then aluminum chloride will be AlCl3. Once we have this written down, we're going to consult our solubility guidelines, or if you have them memorized, just consult yourself, and see if either of these are soluble. So for a net ionic equation to occur, both of our reactants have to be soluble, both of them. If either of them are insoluble, then no reaction will occur. Once you consult your solubility guidelines, you will see that both of these are in fact soluble, which means that we can continue. Our next step is going to be doing a little switch between these compounds. So I'm just going to do a little switch right there. You could also switch between the cations. It's gonna end up being the same thing. So this is going to give you PbCl2 plus ALNO3-3. So remember that you do have to, you know, check for charges and stuff when you're making these new products in the end. So now we are going to consult our solubility guidelines again and check if any of these are insoluble. If they're both soluble, then no reaction occurs. If one of them is insoluble, then we can continue. So check your solubility guidelines and see what you get you will soon find out that AlNO33 is soluble, so it's just gonna stay in its ions, but PbCl2 is insoluble, which means that we can go on with our net ionic equation process. So our next step is going to be to balance this equation. Balancing is another thing that you kind of just, you know, have to practice a lot to get better at. We're not gonna discuss that here. So it's going to be a three here, a 2 here, a 3 here, and a 2 here. So here comes where I like to take a little shortcut because a lot of the time teachers will have you separate everything into ions and cross out spectator ions. And this is very important in understanding the concept, but we're here to get things done quick, right? So what you're going to want to do is take a look at your insoluble product, which in this case is our lead to chloride. So what I like to do right away is put this at the end of our net ionic equation. So I do my little arrow and say that this is 3 PbCl2. So now we're going to look at the individual components of this product. So we have a Pb and we have a Cl2. So now we're going to find each of these from our reactants over here. And we're going to put those in as our reactants of the net ionic equation. So look what we do. So if we're looking for the lead, the Pb, we find it right here, right? So in one molecule of this, so this is the molecule, right? This part, there is one ion, there's the invisible one right there, of lead, right? And there are going to be three of these molecules. So what we're going to do, we're going to multiply these two numbers to get the amount of leads that there are in total. So there are going to be three of those. So now we're going to do the same thing with the aluminum chloride. 
So in one molecule, so this is going to be one molecule right here, there are three ions of chlorine, right? And there are two total molecules. So we're going to multiply those numbers together. We're going to get six chlorines. Now, we are pretty close to finishing, but if you notice something, we have a 3 here, a 6 here, and a 3 here, which can be reduced. Remember, you do need to reduce these, and because we're getting rid of spectator ions at some point, we didn't do it out here, but it did happen, so you might have to reduce. Also, when you do write your final equation, you're going to need to include the charges, and the states of matter. So the little AQ at the end, aqueous, we're gonna have to add that. So let's write this out in full. So we have our lead here, and because this is a three, it's gonna get reduced down to one, but we don't really need to put that, so we can get rid of it. And we know that the charge from up here is two plus, and everything on this side, everything on this side right here, is going to be aqueous. So same thing with the chlorine. There, we had six before, we reduced it down, we're going to divide by three to reduce everything. So we're going to have two chlorines. We know from the periodic table that the charge of one chlorine is just minus. And like everything on that side, it's going to be a Q. And now moving on to our products, we have three PBCl2 because we have a three here that reduces down into one. We don't need to write that. So we're going to have Pb. Cl2, and that is going to be a solid because, as we know, it is insoluble. And that is our complete net ionic equation. So that is our final answer. We did it, guys. This process takes a little bit more thought, maybe, to figure out, you know, what you're doing. But once you practice with this, it saved me a ton of time during tests and practice problems. So I really hope this helps you out if you've been struggling with this. If you need more help, I will link another completely solved problem. I'll do another one in the description below. So you guys just saw how simply scientific net ionic equations can be. I'll see you guys next time.